Uh, hello, everybody. Good evening. Thanks and welcome to this presentation on rebate submission. So really what I wanted to do was have a sort of informal session where people could mostly ask questions. I thought I would go through the process in a semi-structured way. Uh, that is just introduce myself, walk through what that submission process is, you know, get a little sense of where people are in the process right now, and then go through submitting the documentation. I think a couple of you have already submitted and gotten the rebate. So really appreciate your, uh, you know, uh, coaching others on how you did it. Uh, but basically it's a fairly straightforward process, even though it looks very, very wordy and um, intimidating. Um, then put some, some key dates and then let's talk together. Let's like, you know, take exchange ideas and ask away your questions about various plants and things like that. Um, so that's what I thought we would do. So before we star, uh, start, uh, what I'll do is I will just launch a little poll here, uh, which is two questions. The first one is, I just wanna know where various people are in the process of applying for the rebate, right? Whether you've not started or you've started the process but not submitted, or you submitted all your documentation and are waiting for approval, or you already received your check, right? So that's one question. And the second is, are you doing it by yourself or are you, do you have a consultant or somebody else who you're, um, who you're uh, working with? So pretty much everybody seems like, uh, so I have five responses in, Okay, I will start sharing the responses. Uh, okay, cool. Okay, so I will end the poll now in 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8. All right, well, uh, and I'll share the results, but basically it seems like three of the seven people are in, have not started yet. A couple of people have started the process and a couple of people have submitted their documentation and waiting for approval. Nobody has received their check yet, right? Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I should have put in another step there, which is uh, got my approval, but not received my check, sorry. Okay, and everybody did it all by themselves without any consultants or anything. So thanks for sharing that information. That is most useful. I'm hoping mostly to address those uh, five people who have either not started yet or started the process but not submitting and hopefully get you over the line there in terms of submitting. So that's what we're gonna do uh, uh, today. Um, and so let's start with just a high level, right? You know, this is how the process flows. I hope everybody understands that, right? First, make sure you're qualified, go through there. Uh, you know, basically you have to be a resident, you have to be a garden, uh, you have to have a garden and you must be taking out um, something or, or putting in native plants in sufficient quantity. Um, there's a certain rubric where you need to uh, score yourself and make sure, right, there are certain things that you're doing correctly to qualify for the rebate. So I'm not gonna go through that, uh, does, I, but I'll pause there and say, does anybody have any qualification questions that they wanna ask before? Because I'm gonna start with, really start with step two. Is the, uh, yes, I have a question. Is there a minimum amount of um, square footage? I see a hundred feet. Is that the minimum? I think they had something like. See, it was if when you looked at their rubric, um, on, on when you looked at the town's um, numbers, I think basically uh, they they had a questionnaire where they gave you points. And uh, let me see if I can actually get that. It's, it says your garden must be a minimum of fifty square feet. All right, it's 50 square feet minimum. And if you uh, look at, there's a scale on the, uh, on how many points you get for what square footage. It was a little bit confusing when I saw it last, but basically there was a, uh, so here, right here, let's see, residential rebate program. And you go to that um, terms and conditions when you looked at that, basically, right, this is what you wanted to see. If it's a new garden, you get 10 points. If you are adding plants to an existing garden, that's five points. And guess what? If there's a little bit of a gap between the two gardens, it's a new garden. So, you know, be generous in how you evaluate yourselves. 
um, uh, are you replacing lawn and turf? Yes, that's 10 points. So that's important because they are looking for replacing lawn and turf. Uh, and actually that's not a bad thing to do because then you can actually make it ornamental around your lawn or taking a piece of the lawn in. Um, so that's an easy way to get 10 points. And then diversity of plants. So that's one of the things we tried to make sure we could give you a high score on by giving you eight or more species. And then number of plants, uh, right? We pick moderate. So between these two, you get 15 points if you pick the ones that we recommended. But anyway, you can figure out how to uh, maximize those two. Then replacement of invasive species. Most of the time, we are not doing that unless you have a specific, um, uh, you meet a specific criteria there and you have to make sure it's invasive on the New York uh, invasive species list, right? And then size of the garden. This is what we were talking about. 300 square feet or greater, 10 points. 151 square feet to 300 square feet, five points. And then 50 square feet to 100 square feet. So there's like this ambiguity between 100 to 151 square feet. I don't know that that belongs in the five points bucket or the two points bucket, but assume like, you know, let's be generous and assume it belongs in the five point bucket. But anyway, so, so that's what you want to look at um, when you, uh, and if you're a new applicant, you get 10 points. So you just need a minimum of 34 points out of the maximum. So it's pretty easy to score on a number of these criteria, right? So. So, so, so take a look at that, uh, take a look at those documents, make sure that you qualify, make sure, and the qualification, part of the qualification is making sure you're getting that 34 points out of 65 points. Okay. Raju, if I could just interject, maybe the question was, you know, you have to have a minimum of 50 feet, but for the native plant package that you created, I think we needed a minimum of 100. Oh, that's right. That is correct. So if you want to use all the plants, I mean, so you don't have to use all the plants, but you know, that's if, if you looked at the package I created, it had a total of 50 plants, right? Planting 50 plants into 50 square feet can be done, but you'll essentially get a meadow, which kind of like by year two, everybody will be scrabbling and fighting with their neighbor, right? So you don't want to get that. Um, so you want to give them at least two square feet, two and a half square feet space so that they can each sort of grow to maturity and get some sunlight. So that that was the minimum based on what we had recommended. But on the other hand, you don't need to use all the plants there or use some of them on this garden and use it somewhere else. So oh. yeah, I'll, yeah. So you can you can be creative around that. I have another question. Go ahead. Yeah. What kind? What are they looking for for the evidence that it that you live here? They're looking for a deed. What are they looking for? What uh, are you yeah, to uh, they have a list there. So again, if you go on the side, I think a driver's license should suffice. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think driver's license should suffice. A copy of driver's license should, if it has your uh, ID, if you have, it has your, uh, if the current driver's license and has your residence information, it should suffice. Okay. Uh, let me just check on that. So the applicant's name and address must be listed on proof of residency. Town of include driver's license, utility bill, and telephone bill. All, all, all three? Uh, any of them. Any of the three. Any could, one of the three. Okay. Could you go back to the invasive species list? There's no invasive species listed here. I think, they, I think all it says is invasive species, and you can look at the New York invasive species list, right? Yeah. Well, there's a New York State has one. Uh, the Cornell has one. Part of the Lisma University. has one. Yes. Yeah. So which which one do are we? Does it list long, different? Yeah. So they have not defined it. So be creative. As long as you point, I mean, Megan is pretty relaxed and wants to get you the money so um you know as long as you can back it up with one of those lists uh, i think you should be okay but i'm hoping that that is not the 10 points that's going to make the difference between um your 34 or not it's it's five points yeah i hope those five points are not make or break for you but yeah
I also if um so I put I started uh I put down the cardboard and the the mulch, and I have a sixty square foot area that I that I did. Oh, um, no problem. What, no, but the question is, what was my question? Um, oh. Am I less likely to get the grant because I have that, even if I have the points and no, they, no. they weigh it against other people, or you just have to make that 34 points? No, what I would suggest is make it a high diversity of plants. Like, for example, in our package, we recommend five plants for 10 species, right? Instead, you may want to go with uh, three plants of 10 species. So don't skimp on the species, right? I mean, don't like, you know, rather than, you know, rather than skimping on the number of species, I would just say skimp on the number of plants per species, just because then oh. you'll have more diversity and you'll have more uh, overall. Okay, because I had just I had just listed the ones that were in the package. I just copied them all down. Perfect. Then that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay. No, no worries. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you the the point is you may not be able to fit all the fifty plants in there. It's it's fine for you to list them. Uh, I think uh, she should be able to. You should be able to. Um, uh, you know, we can find a creative way to use those plants. Maybe some of them get used there, but some of them get used in a different space. Right, right there are other places I could put them. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, so, so we're already starting to talk about picking a spot in the garden, right? And, and I, I say taking out lawn is a good way to start because, you know, with lawn, you don't have all these issues of, is the ground rooty? Is it too compacted? You know, will anything grow there? Does it have construction debris under it, right? Uh, is it overly dry and you cannot water? So pretty much people have solved most of those problems around whatever is their current lawn. So starting with a lawn, you're guaranteed to get plants growing uh, because you have good dirt there or reasonable dirt there. But anyway, if you're picking ground, just you know, put a stick in there, dig a couple of feet or like that, dig in one spot or a couple of spots. Just check, don't make sure that you're able to dig because if you're under a tree and you're like, oh yeah, this bare spot will do too well. And then you like start digging and you find like you can't get anywhere because it's too rooty. Um, and then you're hurting that tree and you won't get, you know, plants that survive that spot because the tree will choke them, right? So, so, so make sure you're able to dig underneath and see that it's reasonable. It's not like construction debris. It's not compacted and it's all so tight in there that nothing can get in. If it's overly compacted, you, there are some things you can do like, you know, rototillet or something like that to uncompact it before you put plants in, but make sure you know that you're getting into that um, extra effort. Um, then if it's dry, if it's a place that's like far, far away from your house and you're like, oh, that hill slope will do very well because it's behind the trees and I can't get to it anyway. Why don't I put wild plants in there? It's great, but except when it comes to water, if you're not able to water them and they're babies, they're just going to die, right? So make sure it's a place where it's not out of sight. You're able to look at because like any other plant, they also need some gardening care when they are babies. They don't have deep roots. The ground is going to dry out. In nature, you don't get 100% survival. Whereas in a garden, ideally, you want to put you know, every plant you want to buy and put in the ground. There's no reason it can't come up if you watered and took the minimum amount of maintenance um, around it. So, so let me pause there, just picking a spot for this need for this garden. Are there any questions apart from the size? We already had the size question. Does everybody know, like does anybody not know where they're gonna plant? Anybody not sure? Okay. And and any any uh, trouble with measuring the size of it? You don't need to get it super accurate. Just put a big box around the spot and measure the box, the size of the box and you know, roughly estimate, say, hey, it's almost 80% of this box and the box area is this, right? So, you know, don't have to, don't have to get very complicated. Okay, and then plant selection and design, right? We talked about, I mean, you know, so we had this uh, slide deck on our website. Um, I had selected a bunch of plants mainly because not every plant is available. Like, you know, the, the process that they have defined 
is complicated just because by the time you design, you say, oh, these are the plants I want. And they tell you they are ready for the rebate and you go back to the vendor, those plants may or may not be available, right? So that is kind of why we had gone through this trouble of pre-ordering many of these plants, um, just to make sure they would be available. Um, because if you put it into a design, you're putting it into a specific purpose, right? You're saying, okay, this I'm gonna get, this is gonna be my summer blooming, three summer blooming plants, and this one is gonna be the yellow, right? If your yellow goes away and you don't have, only have the other two colors, it just kind of feels odd. So uh, we tried to make sure that we balanced the color palette, the, the, the uh, spring, summer, uh, fall bloomers. Uh, we largely picked things that would stand well on their own and not be flopping over. Um, they're all reasonable from a height perspective. So, so these are, you know, and, and also uh, many of them are sun partial or partial shade. So they'll all work if you, you know, put them, I'm thinking mostly lawn, right? So mostly lawn is like sun, or you could have sun and shade, dappled sun, on, you know, under a tree, uh, sun and shade, they should work reasonably well in those situations. And you can see that they're all medium or medium to wet. And again, I'm thinking lawn because in a lawn, if you have a sprinkler on for the lawn, you can't avoid right that sprinkler uh, occasionally sprinkling your plants as well, which is why, for example, you won't find butterfly weed in our list, simply because butterfly weed prefers it to be more dry than, say, a swamp milkweed, which usually does well next to a lawn. But, you know, um, many of those, I mean, you can always, if, if your spot can take butterfly weed, then you can always add it to this list. And when you submit it to the town, say, hey, I'm gonna also get a butter butterfly milkweed and I'm gonna put it into this spot, into this design and, and, and that'll work perfectly well, right? So, so, so first let me pause on the plants list um, that we had put together. And also some of you had already design ideas and things that you did. So let's talk about plants what works, what is not, what do, what do people think, or any questions? So I have a question. I had used one of the plans. I used a plan for, I think, partial, partial sun and shade and copied down those plants onto, there were 10 of them onto my um, application. Mm -hmm. Was I supposed to use this list? Yes, um, because if you use the partial sun and shade list, from our website, we don't, we can be sure we can get those. Oh, so I should be using this list. Yes, you should. Everybody um, should be using this list. And where will I find this list when I go? It's, on, the, it's on our website. So when you go to our website, so let's go, let's try this again. So when you go to revilelongisland.org, go to uh, either you can go to plant sale. If you go to plant sale, you see the residential rebate program click on, oops, uh, not on the rebate program, but on the, uh, click here to learn about the TONH and how to apply. If you click on that, we have everything, including this deck, right? So you can click on this presentation deck and you'll see the list of plants here, right? Or I, I downloaded the application form with the plants filled in. So if you go to step four, you can actually download an application form with all the plants filled in. Oh, and that's on the website? Yeah. So if you go to our website and you go to this, uh, this page, I will copy and paste this in the chat. So you can go to this, you can bookmark or go to this particular website uh, on our page, which has the 10 steps or eight steps on how to apply for the rebate. And then if you look under step four, it says apply for the rebate. And it says it has a link. Please feel free to download a version of the application form with the plans from our list filled in, right? And you can also you know, download this. If you click on click here, uh, uh, more, maybe, you know, uh, Google Slides, maybe. Uh, no, not Google Slides. Uh, oops, 
by the way. Oh, here is a download. Okay, you, if you click, so if you say create the final, download the Google presentation, you click on that link that says download the Google presentation, and you'll go to a slide where you can actually get your own copy of it, and then you can do file, and then make a copy, and then of the entire presentation. If you did that, it'll go into your directory. Once it goes into your directory, you'll be able to see the list of plants, you'll be able to see the individual plants, you'll be able to actually see the design that uh, we created and you can adjust it. You can just move the boxes where you want them and you know you can actually play around. You can just make a copy of this design and play around with it or better still, just take a piece of paper, draw your garden and sketch it out like with a little sketch pen, sketch them out. I don't think they're looking for great artistry, right? So don't feel intimidated. If you're good at PowerPoint, please go ahead and do it on your favorite graphics program. If you're not good at it, just take a piece of full skip paper, draw it out roughly, sketch out the areas, put their boundaries in there, write the names in there, take a photo, and you're done. Right. And, and, and I noticed Lisa said in the chat that she submitted a utility bill with her name on it. So yeah, just is for, for them. I I, I'm still having trouble finding these things on the website. I'm trying to look for them now. Okay. All right. So if you go to our website, click on plant sale, right on the okay. beginning I, of our website, yeah. right? The, uh, so revilelongisland.org. Yeah. Click on plant sale. And then it says yeah. click on click here to learn about the DONH rebate and how to apply, right? It says, okay. yeah. Okay. So, so when you click on that, you will see this entire set of steps about how to apply and go through right and when you go down to step four right you can four. download a version of the application with oh. the class list okay okay or you can even download this presentation it says to create the final design you can download the google presentation that you and there's a link there okay so, so a lot of links in here um and 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 I thought it would be better to put a little bit more information than less information. So so partners, but basically you can do a lot of things with this thing. I, I have a quick quick question to ask. Um, so let's see. So the the plant list. Uh, many of the plants want wet conditions. Are you saying that's just in the beginning, and then once they're established? We yeah. don't have to water them or yeah. so um, they uh, they're all medium to wet right they're not wet they are medium to wet meaning they are very good with being once they are mature okay once they are full grown and they are the same they need water once a week in the heat of summer you don't need to water them in i don't water any of my plants in may or even through most of june but when you have dog days like we have now, for example, but we usually never go one whole week without a big cloudburst, but sometimes we do. Sometimes we have like back to back back days and you will see it in the plant, right? It's not going to, in very many cases, it's not going to die. But if you want to have good quality blooms and you want the plant to be happy, um, you should water it. So it's much better to water these plants deeply and infrequently then water them, you know, lightly and regularly, right? So you really, if, if, if you had a choice or if you have a way of doing it, then just give them like drip them water or get a smart irrigation system, which knows how to handle perennials, whatever. That's what I do. I put my smart irrigation um, uh, uh, meter on a perennial plant setting. What that does is it'll come and water it once, go away, water a whole bunch of other stuff, and then come back and water them. So the water has time to soak into the ground. And then the next time it waters, like in an hour later, it's, it's, it's able to sink in deeper. So you're able to water it fewer times, but you are able to get the water in deeper, which is really where you want to encourage them to have deep roots. So um, I would never say no water for pretty much any plant, including my cactus, but uh, but if and if there's like a really horrible week 
where it did not rain and it got super hot, I would water. But it's much, much, much less compared to what I have to do with my lawn, right? Um, Roger, my biggest concern is the swamp milkweed because I have it in the, um, you know, I do, and Megan came back to me. She did approve my thing, my application, and she was most concerned about that one. It is going to be in a full sun spot some, with the foxglove and the goldenrod, but that area where it's full sun, I have sprinklers, but that area is drier than other areas, and 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 the swamp milkweed is supposed to have wetter conditions. So that was my only concern is, is my swamp milkweed gonna die because it's in the sunniest spot, which is also the hottest, you know, spot in terms of the, the, the I don't know. So I'll have to water that more keenly in the beginning. But, you know, when I looked up swamp milkweed, it did say, you know, of course, given the name swamp, right, it wants wetter conditions, like the people put that in rain gardens. So I was just concerned about that one with the other. Good, good concern, good concern. I included it because lawn conditions vary, right? And so if, for example, in your lawn, you find a little place where the water pools or something like that, I would go, I mean, don't worry about the design we gave you, right? I mean, that's just like ideal, everything is being the same. But if you have um, a, a, a wetter place for the swamp milkweed, take it out of this design, put it there, get yourself butterfly milkweed for that dry spot. Right, which is why this whole package is about $250 and you can apply up to $350. So take this package, add butterfly milkweed to it and tell Megan, like, you know, in the notes section, just say we are moving the swamp milkweed to a wetter spot and putting butterfly milkweed in. It's, it's easy. Yeah, no, to, totally. I'm, I'm glad you raised that concern because I want to make that distinction between, and, and I don't put common milkweed in the list simply because it tends to spread a lot. Unless you have a little place where you can contain it, I would not recommend common milkweed, whereas swamp milkweed seems to stay, uh, uh, and, and butterfly milkweed seem to stay a lot more disciplined. They are a lot prettier, but the difference is butterfly milkweed needs to be dry and swamp milkweed needs to be wet. So yeah, so please, when you do that, uh, make that, make that distinction. Now, on the rewild tour, you gave or so, they gave butterfly milkweed seeds. Right. Would we be able to use those? Like I do, you know, can those just be? Because I looked up and there's different, there's variations of how to deal with that. Can we put those seeds in this garden in that spot? Um, you can. Uh, you definitely can. What I would suggest is not putting seeds in the garden directly. Just take little and and don't do it now. Just do it, you know, use the natural cycle of the season. It requires, typically most of these plants require the seeds to go through one cycle of cold weather before they will germinate. So put them in little, you know, whatever uh, uh, germination pots with nice, good soil and put a couple of seeds in each one and just leave a cup of them um, uh, outdoors before, you know, October, November in that time frame. Um, and let them, uh, you know, see what comes up. You know, you, you, you should start seeing them germinate and come up by May, June, etc. And then once you see them come up and they mature a little bit, then put them in the ground because then you can put them in exact spots. Otherwise you don't know which seed will uh, germinate and which will not. And you won't know whether something that came up was indeed butterfly milkweed or it was just, I don't know, some, some other plant, horse, horse weed that came up in that spot, right? So you don't want to wait an entire season before you find out. So just grow them in little cups outside. And uh, once you're sure about what you got, then put it in the spot. That's definitely a great way of doing it. Um, when we do the fall sale, I'll try to get some butterfly milkweed. I mean, butterfly milkweed goes through these seasons where sometimes it's just impossible to get them. And some years, you know, they are there for the asking and nobody wants them, right? So um, hopefully we'll get them this fall uh, you know, on the rewild site. And if we do, and there'll be other plants too. So if, if you add them, uh, you might be able to get them uh, in time for the fall. So, so when we have this, um, 
this plan here, let's say we, we, I submit this, what you have right here, and then um, I end up putting in some slightly different plants, would that be okay? I mean, would there be a problem but I have to pay, no. pay back? The, the yeah, no, so yeah. what, what you, you can absolutely do that. Well, what I would suggest in that case is write to Megan and say, hey, I'm using some of these plants in a different spot in my garden and then um you know add some more plants in there so, so you can absolutely change the design there is no problem with your changing the design there is no problem with your changing the design but you need to communicate that correctly because she should not feel like you used only half these plants and then where are my other, like in the end, when you have to provide proof that you planted the garden, you may want to show like, hey, I planted the main garden here and these are other plants that I planted in this other section. And here's the total receipt or something like that. Total that yeah, I was wondering about that. So there, I didn't see, see where, when you had to show the proof that you planted it and where you, how you submit I that. Think, I think uh, when you look at the rebate program application, yeah. uh, says that right so basically um, um okay you know actually it says that on the main site itself i think oh it's on the site itself yeah i think it's on the site itself i think she has a form there which is reimbursement and documents checklist here is reimbursement documents checklist you should show receipts for all purchases you should show updated plant list including prices right so for each you know how many plants per the same total spent mm -hmm. updated design really what did you end up doing oh, okay and or place them in different locations she's okay with you if you've placed them in different locations than your original design but you need to let her know right and then you have to say okay here is where i placed it by these plants i took and put them in this other location and then multiple photos of your finished garden this is what they want for the final receipts right okay Do they reimburse for mulch or just the plants? I think only for the plants. Um, yeah, because it's common. It's not just only for the plants. It's the plants on their native plant list. So if you look at the native plant list they have here, here is a native plant list. It has to be on this list, right? So there's a bunch of, and so the plants we picked were picked from this list. So make sure if you're not putting in something that is, if you're putting in something that's outside our list, you're putting in something from their native plant list. Okay. And make sure it's available. Make sure you're not, you know, that's the tricky part of it. Sometimes, you know, it'll be like, you know, like a black cohort. You'll be like, oh yeah, I love that plant, whatever. And then you go and spend, spend $40 on that one plant. And you're like, oh my God, that's, a, that's way too much when everything else costs like $5 a piece or $2 a piece. So yeah, so, so just be, be cognizant of what you're doing there. We, we are, that's why, I mean, when we go and get plants, we get like super small plants, simply because it's easy to move around at that size. They are more um, like, you know, a little bit more, e you know, easy to handle and they don't get damaged easily. Otherwise, imagine trying to, you know, cart together two and four gallon plants. Um, you know, every three times you move them, you're going to break something. So smaller plants are much easier. On the other hand, smaller plants, the point is, you just need to be patient. Like, you know, you're not going to have instant gratification. But by the time the second year rolls around or the third year rolls around, you'll be like so glad you put them in because they grow in that spot. They, you know, adapt very well to that spot. So the root system is very much attuned to it. Say so that they do very, very well. I, you know, I, I, I know many of you have heard the saying that native plants, you know, the first year they sleep and the second year they creep and the third year they leap. It's kind of corny, but it's so true. It's only till the third year you're like, oh my God, this thing is so amazing. Right. So, all right. So, all right. So we got the plant lists and the garden thing together. Uh, oh, 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 prepare the ground, order plants. All right, so fill in the form, right? So that's the form to fill in. There's main, mainly one form for you to apply for the rebate. There is one main form to fill in. 
and that is this form and and i and as i showed you there is a link version of this form on our website with the plants filled in the rest of the questions are not at all onerous i think pretty much you know if you set your mind to it this can be done it's an hour long process in including the time it's going to take you to draw your garden and label the plants, right? Just full name, email, street address, zip code, phone number, new or repeat, right? I mean, it's fairly straightforward purpose of garden, garden dimensions, location, conditions, right? Invasive species, are you removing anything? Then the list of plants you're putting in, what is the approximate budget? Right, you can absolutely put in 350 or 300 or whatever you feel like, and then ultimately you'll be submitting receipts and uh, telling them what you want. Um, so put in 350 if you have to, and then you can you can work your way back. Um, and then uh, garden layout, right? Uh, basic garden layout, uh, and and see this uh, uh, document for uh, information how to create the garden layout, and then put the attached uh, uh, documents. Right. So, okay. So, so pretty much uh, fairly straightforward. All you need to submit is proof of residency, which is your driver's license, utility bill, whatever. Photograph of your proposed garden. You can first of all go to Google Maps. So, if you are, you know, like me, if you want an aerial photograph, you can always go to maps.google.com. You can put in your address. So let me put my address in and then zoom into where your house is. And then once you go to where your house is, go to these layers and turn on satellite, then you'll see the full wow. map of the house and the property. And then you can zoom in. So my backyard, uh, my meadow is actually on Google Maps now. I didn't realize <laughs> that. And then you can do a, if you're using Windows, you can use a little program called SNP uh, uh, as uh, you just have to type in uh, snipping tool and then the snipping tool will allow you, you can take a little photo of that area and where is this on here where is the snipping tool uh, it's on if you go to your windows like so windows um, you, there's a little magnifying on my system there's a little magnifying glass on the bottom left uh, or there's the windows icon you can just click on the windows icon and then there's a search bar on top of it and there you can type in snipping tool and it'll come up right it's a windows utility you can just snip it um, that's one way of doing it uh, or you can do it on your phone and take a screenshot if you know how to take a screenshot with your phone you can zoom in and take a screenshot so any which way or best still call a teenager into your room and say please help me take this whatever so you can do it so many different ways but you can get an I'll aerial just walk out. i'll just open the front door and yell for you random teenager. There you go. that's that's <laughs> the easy one. it's like please uh, yeah so anyway so yeah so that's you can always get uh photos from uh, google maps uh, that's that's uh, or Google Earth is even better. It'll give you better quality. So there's many different ways. Or just get on, get to a high point and take photos. It's not 100% necessary that you have to uh, do it this way, right? So you can you can do this, and then you can take a, a snapshot and just mark the area where your garden is going to be. Um, So, uh, so that's what I would recommend from a point of view of photographs, including an aerial image and then basic garden layout, right? So, so if you do that, um, so it, the whole thing, right? Like, you know, maybe two hours max if you do it slowly, but really if you did it in a focused way, it's not a very complicated thing. And wherever you run into problems with online stuff, just go back to paper and pen if that's what you're comfortable with, paper and sketch pen, just do it and then take a photo and then Put the photo with that. With that. If I can't do the aerial photo, can I just send them? I have. A, I took a photograph of the area. Yeah, that's good enough. I think so. I think um, uh, Lisa or anybody else who had submitted is that what you did? What did you do with photos? Uh, I I did um uh, for I did a picture of, of of my survey, my property survey actually to show them. That's how okay. I did. That. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, but you didn't go out to your garden and take a photo of the spot? 
Oh, oh I did. I did. Okay. I, I have a whole, I took, I showed them the, on, um, you know, the, the front lawn without anything planted first. And then I submitted that too. So I okay. did that and I did a little drawing. I, I have a slideshow I could show you. Okay, please. Yeah, I'll stop sharing. You can just uh, quickly. Do you like, want me to, do you want me to? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Just once again, let me just. Go okay, ahead. I got to figure out. Okay, there we go. Okay, I can show uh, you. Once again, I'll, I'll first let you share. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So let me see where it is. So I'll, I'll do it really pretty quickly because you did such an amazing job, actually. Okay. And and I'll tell you, I wish I had ordered your plants because I think I did it much harder. Oh, that's with beautiful. It. So that's I think gorgeous. What you did, I think what you did is like so nice with your plants. So yeah. So um, this is Ellie. I, Ellie, are you there? I think you're there, right? This is my friend of my house. That's beautiful. Beautiful, gorgeous. Thanks. You so can't be claiming so that's for it. New. So that's all new. So from oh. side to side. Oh, wow. It's all so new? Like, well, I mean, no, left, right. OK, so see the hydrangea on the right? That was there. And then there's on the left side, there's like um, mint. You could sort of see. Cat yeah. mint. So between, between like the cat mint and the hydrangea is all a new bed. Beautiful. Okay, Beautiful. so, you know, everything you said is absolutely true. And I used one of the plans and I kind of, I, I, um, I basically took a sunny condition plan. This is not the sunny condition. And I kind of did it that way. I modeled after that. Uh -huh. Then I made a little drawing and then the bottom it says- Oh my God, your drawing is so good. <laughs> well, it says Avenue B. And then I did my measurements, but, and you could see I made uh, it six feet wide. And it's like, this is with 72 feet. And this is sunny, sunny, sunny. And then I, I kind of looked at the plant list that they had provided and I, um, I borrowed some from that, that list. So here's how I gave them on the left. That's my house before the garden. And, mm -hmm. and I really want, and there's my um, map, my survey. And then on the survey, I said, look, I put a little arrow and a little green thing. And I said, hey, this is where my garden's gonna be on the survey. Mm -hmm. I got into it. I got way into it. Nice. Oh my God, you did such a beautiful job. I got job. so into it. And then there's my plant oh, list oh. and there's swamp rose. Now here's the thing, and I'll just say this quickly. I, I, I didn't get everything I wanted on my list. And I ordered it in the beginning of the seasons from Garvey's Point and they had a native plant sale. Nice. So I ordered it from Garvey's Point. The plants were really big and it didn't align with my actually the amount of plants that I put in for because like I, the plants were bigger. So, it, you know, as a new gardener, that's a little confusing to me, but that's it. So I had to get much less plants because my plants weren't babies. So the plants okay. were bigger. So again, I adapted everything a little bit and then I took pictures and now I hired somebody to do this bed. I didn't put the cardboard down. Okay. And for me, that was a good investment to actually get somebody to, to dig out the soil. I, I'm capable of doing it because you can see I have vegetable garden. No, but Lisa, the point is not that, it's not the manual labor involved. Yeah, at all. It's, the, it's the fun, right? It's the fun no, of no, it. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's just that when you dug up that uh, uh, soil, yeah, there's a whole bunch of seeds, new seeds in the seed bed under your ground that yeah. just came up and now they're going to feel tilled and they're going to pop out as weeds. So the real issue is weeding. The Bye. reason why we suggest cardboarding and mulching, right. a big portion of that is next year you will realize how many weeds start coming up. Whereas if you cardboard and mulch, your first year is almost weed free. And then you give your plants a chance to grow and establish. You get used to your plants and then weed. It's just, I'm telling you, I've done it both ways. I did, okay. this is the way I did it yep. <laughs> so the first time. And well, so I, did, I did put a, you know, a bark down, so that's good. So okay, like, good. You help. put on some mulch down, okay. Yeah, I, mul I mulched it. So um, this is the final prop, this is, then I took, this is the end. This is what I submitted to them with the receipts and stuff. And then I okay. made these little arrows and again everything kind of moved and like and so we showed them that and then I put the amounts and then they really want they want everything in um people they want everything in latin too so like I put the common name and then the latin name and that's really annoying and then this is the list breakdown which is kind of annoying but you did it so a latin and the common name and then they don't want to pay tax. They won't pay the tax on the 350. So I just put the um, the amount of the plants, three at 18 or whatever they were, and that. And then I did make, um, 
And then I did make, I did go to like Bayless. I made a mistake. I bought, you know, I asked him if it was native. I did buy something that wasn't on the list. So I, you know, I put it in the bed, but it wasn't a native plant. I thought it was. No, and, and Lisa, yeah. great job, right? Great job. I love the way that your garden looks. Thanks. So one of the things, the reason why I made that list was yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a good list. Yeah, it's because so see, yeah. for example, you got about 20 plants for yeah. about $350, right. whereas we are trying to get you 50 plants for $250, right? Because basically yeah. you're trying to get a lot more. Um, and you can, you, I mean, the point is you could plant. This looks beautiful though. I, I really love the way oh, the space is filled out. Very Yeah, nice. and this is a great plant. This one is um, um, fall sunflower, which is gonna yeah. just take over. And I'm really excited about that. And then I bought like a cardinal flower. Again, it's like, you know, it's whatever. So, and then I took some little pictures. Very of nice. This is already what- I love, the, I love your bee balm, your monarch. Bee balm, I picked that up, yeah, it's separately. You know, what, what? you made it so easy and I really highly, um, you know, but I, I sort of figured out the whole plant list on my own by looking at their list <laughs> no, and like no. doing it. But, you know, you figured it out. Okay, but just I hold there. That is the butterfly milkweed, folks. So with the one that you see on the right yeah. there. So for those of you who didn't recognize it, that's the butterfly milkweed. So Do you pretty. have a swamp milkweed at all, uh, Lisa? Um, I have it from last year from you guys. Okay, you have. Okay, um, so it's not on this list, but not the on point this is, list, but I have yeah. it in another spot. That yeah, I, okay. from I just wanted yeah. to show people the contrast, but we, but this is a great example. Um, this is like a labor of love. I was trying to tell people it's a it lot is. easier than this, but now you kind of blew my entire story. Well, it was fun. I'm acing, sorry. I mean, I, I, like to <laughs> I like to complicate everything, but no, I don't. I, I just no, you did a beautiful it. job. So on the left are like rewild plants from last year that like took off. There's um. What do you call this one? The one that's like a, um, it's on the list. It's a, a, it's a grass, a switchgrass? Yeah. Switchgrass, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then people were talking about the swamp rose and I have that in the front, just like you said, like to the right of, of my house, sort of in the corner of, of Cross Street here, this is okay. Avenue B and this is Cross Street. There's a swamp rose, there's all this stuff back by the house, my neighbor's house. So anyway, that's I'm, it. So I'm just so glad. I'm, I'm seeing more and more of the people. Oh, that, like what oh, is that. nice? Okay. I'm looking at it because I, I I set up mine toward the front of my property. I'm also on a corner. Yeah, and it's gonna be so I nice. I have an area and yeah on this side there that would look lovely if I did something like that. Wrap That's around, beautiful. like I wrapped around. You know, I kept adding. So you know, and yeah, then so maybe I, next year, this yeah. year I'll do this one, and next year maybe I'll do that one. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yes, like and, that. and go down, Lisa. Go down to the photo just one second. Which ones? The plan? Uh, no, no, just a little bit about uh, the, of your property. Um, the other spot, like, yeah, stay, stay right there. The okay. other spot I could see, like somebody rewilding, for example, is around that tree, a circle, like a large circle around that tree. Um, uh, Here uh, in no, the back, the, the right. driveway yeah, by the yeah. house. Yeah. yeah, yeah, by the house. So, so there are so many ideas, and I love the look. I'm seeing more and more people, at least in Port Washington. Yeah. Instead of having a bare lawn, having this, uh, like a a, a lush. Um, garden screen up front, and that is so pretty to walk by. So I'm always looking at people's plants at that. Time. So I think the thing that's I mean, exciting me is that um, like people are stopping and noticing, and it gives me an opportunity to say to them, you know, we have we don't need a big lawn, and you know, we can start thinking about ways that we can reduce it. So it's like a little bit of public relations for the neighborhood. So then I can sort of say a spiel about you know why we maybe want to reduce the lawn in the front, like you've always been saying. So, you know, and, and I'm on a, a lot of lawn sign, put a yard sign, a nice thing. Yeah, but this is beautiful. So it's a Thank great, you. yeah, it's Thank a great you. example. I'm going to stop my share. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm just going to butt in for one second. I'm Lisa's neighbor. Hi, Ellie. And I'm one, one of those people that stop by every day to check out how it's looking. And I am astounded that I said to her, it looks like this has been established for a long time. It grew uh -huh. so quickly, and there's other neighbors that are stopping by. Sure. Uh, another one that I walk with every day, and we come by and check it out every single day. It's lovely, uh -huh. and I went on the I went on the tour, so I'm like very, I'm not as I I can't get as um, excited as Lisa because I was like, oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> she has a beautiful garden. Don't let her. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. No, there are there are lots of uh, gardens. Lisa, that's... can I ask yes. you a question? 
Sure. Did you use an auger to to make your um the holes in the ground? No, I used I got I got a I have a nice shovel, and I use a shovel and I put a little um biotone and I I have a compost bin that I keep and I put I backfilled it with the compost that I make. I have a question also. Did you put a border in it? My husband is keen on having some separation between the grass. Yeah, the I left a strip of grass um, like next to the sidewalk. So like there's about a you two have like a line like a, yeah, like a two yeah. foot uh, two foot strip of, of lawn. And then and then I started the bed behind it. I went to a lecture at the uh, Clark Botanical Garden and they were talking about how the husbands really want to keep the grass. It's very funny yeah. <laughs> said that. <laughs> my, husband, my husband does not want to keep the grass. He said, no grass, I don't want to mow. So get rid oh. of it. <laughs> <Lucky you. laughs> yeah. so, so getting rid of grass, that's a good like next step, which is I, I, here I would highly encourage this step simply because of years of experience of doing it the wrong way and then realizing how many hours I wasted weeding when I didn't need to, and that is cardboarding and mulching. I cannot emphasize enough, right? Just put in some uh, cardboard, like this is an example of like where we had put in cardboard and mulch. This was the Unitarian Universalist congregation in Shelter Rock, where Anne-Marie Ansel and others had, with Rewild's help, put in the first um, native plant garden Initially, there was a lot of resistance from a lot of people who were like, oh my God, pretty lawn, and then you're gonna have weeds there and so on. And now the congregation just loves it. As you can see, that's a beautiful um, that native beautiful. plant, uh, you know, yard, which is very, uh, you know, totally, totally friendly. And now the whole congregation has gone the other way. They, they have a hundred acre property and now they are rewilding the entire property now over years and we have students out there as well so uh, raju i'm on the board there by the way oh you are jane yeah of course right you are i'm, I'm so proud of what you guys did and and how beautifully that uh, property is evolving now right i mean our students are out there and they see coyotes they have coyote cams they are taking out the bamboo it's, it's just gorgeous so so but but the, but the lesson right um do do this which is cardboard just go to i mean you could just be amazon boxes that you get right um strip out all the uh plastic take out the staples spread them out nicely um put put mulch on it just get bags of mulch uh or if there's a friendly whatever uh tree trimming guy in the neighborhood he'll give you a bag of uh, wood chips whatever you want, put it on there just to weight the cardboard down, leave it there for a month or two at least, let it like, you know, suppress all the growth underneath. You're just cutting off light, you're cutting off water to all the weeds that could potentially grow and you're removing by creeping that cardboard, you are creating a barrier for those weeds. What you will do when you plant is you will dig a hole through the cardboard just precisely to fit your plant. Ideally, you can cut that hole in. If you have a cordless drill, all you need to do is to go and look for a plant auger attachment. You can put that on your uh, uh, drill, drill right through the cardboard, make a nice little hole for the plant, and then you put the plant in. That way, your plant has access to all the nutrients and the light and the water that it needs. None of the weeds do. And then it makes your, especially when we are giving you small plants, it helps you because next year, see right now, you know exactly where your plants are because you put them in the ground and they're right there sticking you know, at you. Next spring, you know, all these things are going to go back to the ground. They're going to be start over from zero. They're going to start over from little, they're going to be little shoots growing up. When they are little shoots, will you recognize them? Will you know, oh yeah, that's the butterfly milkweed and this is the horseweed and this is uh, another, uh, you know, whatever violet that's coming out, whatever. Are you going to recognize, if you're really good at plant identification when it's small, great. Otherwise, what you will do is you'll freeze. You'll say, I don't want to pull out my butterfly milkweed by mistake, so let me let it all grow. And then it all grows into a lush thick jungle. And then you're like, oh my God, I got like weeds, right? So this really helps you from that point of view because at least for the first year, you will get your plants. Whatever comes out will be your plants. A few weeds will come through because when you cut holes in the cardboard, they'll always come through, but it'll be very clear. Second, we are going to plant to a pattern, right? So when you look at like the patterns we put here, 
we are going to plant to patterns like you know you put down in in a in a if you put it on a cycle you put down one two three four five so when you look at when when we when it comes time to weed even if you don't know the plant you'll see oh yeah plant 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 oh this must be a weed it doesn't look like the others and it's not one of the five so doing patterns um helps a lot uh because you know it's like planting is like you know dating and or like getting married or something like that and then the rest of the marriage is like you know keeping everything going and everybody knows that the work is real work is after right but the real work is in maintenance the real work is in weeding it's in years and years afterwards so make that a lot easier by doing a little bit of cardboarding and mulching up front raju are the plants on the um that are in the garden list are those ones that like like the I have some native species that are in my garden right now, but they come up in all kinds of places that they're not supposed to. And well, I'm, so you're saying that you'll know where they are the second year. Will that be happening? Yes. That, you know, so, they'll just so, randomly feed? So here's the thing, right? So here are the only way a plant is going to quote unquote move, right? These are perennial plants. They'll come, come back up from their roots. They will also, you know, if they're not happy with the spot they are, or they are very happy with the spot they are, some of the plants will also put runners underground and pop out in other places, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, or their seeds could be dropping somewhere and mm -hmm. come up. So you will see them in other spaces too. So I'm not going to say no. Um, but within but, that, but within the garden, they should come up in the same place and they should like find, um, I, I don't know, example. If yeah. I have a swamp milk weed in a certain spot. So the different, the, there are some exceptions like black-eyed Susans, I think, are biennials or something like that. So once every two years, they change spots and come back from species seed. Um, likewise, I think um, uh, columbine, wild columbine, comes back up from seed. So there are some things which you know do come back up from seed, but everything here on our list, I think, is a perennial. So you should pretty much see it coming back in the same spot. Okay. Um, there is nothing here that, and they may form little clumps, which is great. I mean, like Joe, purple Joe pie weed, for example, will form little clumps right around the base of the mama tree. They'll form little clumps. That's fine. But even then, it's easy to identify and weed. Um, uh, and, and if you find it, for example, if I find a Joe pie weed, you know, uh, whatever, for some reason, miraculously sprouted among the heliopsis. I will dig it out and put it back among the jopai weed, or I will weed it. I will not let it grow. I don't want, I mean, if you're going for a meadow look, that is different. If you're going for a garden look, then keep like plants together and get flows of color. Don't let things grow into one another. Keep a separation between them with some mulch. Keep it clean. Give yourself some weeding space to get in there and pull things out. That's a garden look. I'm not, and I'm not dictating aesthetic, right? Because you can do it. Which, I mean, in my front yard, I have a garden look with that particular thing in mind, right? Which is because people are used to seeing gardens in the front yard. So I leave it like more like a garden, more like a formal garden with clumps separated by mulch. In my backyard, I have a wild meadow, right? Because I love that too. So it's it's totally up to you how you want to do it in the space you want to do it. But know the look that you're going for and um, plant to that look. And, and also the weeding will follow that look. So in my meadow, when I'm weeding, I'm not taking out every random plant, but I have to take out like oaks, maples, right? Occasionally I'll get the porcelain berry. So birds will drop things in wherever you are, especially if you have native plants and they're going to come and eat that, um, you know, they're going to come and eat that uh, uh, corn flower seed or whatever it is. Um, they, they'll, they'll poop and then you'll get seeds from, you know, whatever they ate before yeah. and those will sprout. So, so it's kind of, it's nature, that's nature, but you, you, you need to have a weeding plan in place uh, ahead that'll, that'll work with whatever design, because nature is not going to hold to your design just you have to continuously like work a little bit up to keep your design um and and there are some simple tricks you can do to keep that design and the most important thing is to know your plants and plant them in patterns so that weeding comes easy okay so, so if i um if i still have to put the cardboard down and the mulch down to kill the lawn um 
that means I'm not going to be able to apply for the reimbursement this year, right? Oh no, just you no, know, just six weeks. I'm not. Six weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do the do the cardboarding and mulching now because you're going to be planting in uh, September or, or August or September. So yeah, I just I'm, put mine down this week. I put it down on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Monday, of course. Just okay. a few weeks, not you know, okay. at least a minimum of three weeks. I would say, just give it a little bit of time to soak inside. That's all. And kill things up. I have a, a question about the augers. When I, I volunteered to help do some planting at the Baxter Pond, and um, I don't know wh whose augers they were, but they had a whole bunch of them. Is is there is it possible to get help with that? Because I'm not comfortable using the oh, tool. Uh, I can help you. Uh, I mean, if you come over to the Rewild Garden at Dodge, any. Saturday between nine and eleven, we are there working on it. And um, yeah, I can um, show you if you bring your auger, right? Uh, any like you know, this is what when we are talking about augers. Yeah, I mean, I'm not recommending any particular model, but basically this seems like a reasonable price, right? Like if you're paying ten, twelve dollars for it, but here, here they are making you buy two of them. But basically, um, you know, that's they, there's a thin one and a thick one that they have, one for smaller plants and one for larger plants, I guess. So you could put the, you just stick the bottom end of this auger uh, that you're seeing here, you can stick the bottom end into a cordless drill and tighten it, and then that's it. I mean, so you're using it almost like a screwdriver, except you're driving the screwdriver into the earth. It takes a couple of different tries. I'm happy to help anyone with uh, with uh, with this. It's a, it's a very useful tool to have. If you, you know, if you're gonna just do it once, then don't bother, but if you're gonna do it multiple times or you're a gardener by the thing, it's very useful. Okay, thank you. I think I will take you up on that because I'm nervous about using the tools. Of course, yeah, perfect. Okay, and then so pick, I mean, if you're ordering with us, uh, we have we have only 10 packages, right? So even though um, I put these plants down, we don't have infinite num supply of them. I just, we had to pre-order and prepay for them. So I just bought 10 packages. So please order them as soon as you get, or as soon as you want to or can or whatever. And how do we order them from you? Oh, just um, go to the same thing, plant sale, right? Like, so go to our rewildlongisland.org, right? Rewildlongisland.org. Um, do it on a PC, please, because I get enough people with cell phones oh. that sometimes give you give me a problem. So you click on plant sale, and then you come to this page, and then you, uh, and then, uh, oh, okay, I should put the buy here. But if you go to this uh, TONH and how to apply, if you scroll down there, you'll see a buy now sign, you click on the buy oh, now sign, okay. and then you'll say add to cart, and then you can go to your cart. Okay. You top right, you'll see your cart, you click on your cart, and then just check out, and then just pay for it. Oh, one thing is the town will not pay for uh, taxes, so you'll have to pay taxes on anything, right? They will not reimburse you for taxes, no matter where you buy it from. So just uh, for the plants only, but um, yeah, you can put your email, shipping, pickup location, whatever. And I mean, pickup location is uh, Rewild Long Island, uh, Dodge Garden. I don't have a PC. I do everything on my iPad. Okay, then what you want to do is uh, on your iPad, iPad yeah. is good. iPad will work. If you're doing okay. it on a phone, turn the phone horizontally. So don't hold your phone like this while you're shopping. Hold it like this while you're shopping, and then everything will be fine. You'll see the cart on the top. Okay, thank you. Um, if I can encourage anybody, I'm not a planner, so this plan really forced me to stop thinking and talking about it and actually do it. Mm -hmm. And um, and I I'm because I'm so technologically a little behind these days, it did take me, it, the application, like Raju said, is very quick, but the thinking and the processing and the figuring out where it was gonna go took me kind of forever. So it really took me a long time, but at the end of the day, I submitted it. Megan at Town North Hempstead is incredibly helpful. She wrote back you know, pretty quickly and asked me some questions. And I answered them, and um, and then once she approved it, you know, I I did the cardboard and mulch, and I do have pictures of that if anybody wants to see it. But I did, yeah, uh, please. I did uh, if I can figure out how to do it. Um, <laughs> okay. I don't I don't know how to do anything. But, <laughs> <Okay>. uh, <laughs> where did my presentation? I don't know. Where. Um, 
don't know where it went. Where did, good, I don't good, know how to, good, to, good, know how to get to it, but I did. Don't I have, yeah, okay. I have all these things, me. but I did good. cardboard. You know, I, 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 we get tons of packages, right? So I opened everything. I took all the plastic tape off and I, and I put that all down and I didn't realize we really needed a lot of mulch to cover 150 square feet. We, and I bought bags and, um, you know, bareless, although I want to support local, they charge a lot and I needed they do. a lot. North Shore so was less expensive. Yeah, we ended up going there. on Depot. We bought a few bags, but I mean, Bayless charged $12 yeah. and we got them at Home Depot for like four. So if you're buying- right. And then at, at, bags, if you want it locally, North Shore had them, because I, I didn't have enough also. Uh -huh. It was $6 a bag at North Shore. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's good. So yeah. we, we, I would get rather go there than Home Depot. That's not that much more, but it was a lot. Um, you know, so I had my presentation up, Raju. I'm sorry, I don't know where it is now. Right. No worries. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, one thing I would say, just let me share this very quickly for those who have not seen it. Uh, there's something called a mulch calculator. Calculator. Just go to Google and Google mulch calculator. And if you say if you have 150 square feet, you know, typically put in like two to three inches of mulch and it'll calculate. It'll tell you two cubic, usually your bags that you get are two cubic foot uh, bags. You will need 19 to 20 bags of uh, two cubic foot, two cubic feet in order to cover 150 square feet. So there's a mulch calculator. And this mulch, again, if you go to read that article that we told you to read on cardboarding and mulching, we have a pointer to the calculator. But again, useful thing. So you don't have to keep going to the trip, make trips to the store. Just calculate how many bags of mulch you need um, based on the square footage you have. Get the bags of mulch and put it on the ground. Um, you, should, you should be fine. All right, so that's that's. Um, I mean, think. I mean, basically, that's it. I mean, planting, right? Um, pick up your plants on from Rival Gardener Dodge, October twenty third, nine a.m. Uh, from Rival Gardener Dodge, and then uh, you can plant. So anytime, like you know, it, you can cardboard and mulch in September. Is it too hot right now? Don't want to do it? No problem. By September first, please cardboard and mulch. So you'll be well ready and set for October uh, 23rd, and then you can get it and then put the plants in the ground soon after that, and you can still send in the uh, receipts uh, uh, and, and pick up your receipts, right? Okay, so I will pause there. Any, uh, of course, uh, discussion, experience sharing, anything else that people want to Ask me. I mean, thanks for keeping it very interactive. Really appreciated it. But while we are talking, let me also put out another quick poll, which is basically, how sure are you now that you have heard the presentation that you can get your garden going this year? No confidence, somewhat hopeful. Come on, I want to get seven out of seven. Reasonably sure <laughs> you will get it. No, no, it's okay. So we'll we'll try to get you. I'm like anything you need help with, right? So we are at the Rewild Garden at Dodge 58 Harbor Road. Um, pretty much every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So you can come and you can ask us any questions. And actually, you know, pretty much all these principles of cardboarding, mulching, planting, auger is something we do day in and day out there. So you can actually see how those things are done. So, all right, so that's good. I mean, I think most of you are reasonably sure you'll get it done. A couple of you are somewhat hopeful. Good, I'm glad. I'm glad that, uh, that, that we are. We are, we are where we are. And so good luck to all of you. Reach out to me by email if you have any questions. Um, put in for a rebate quickly. And once you get the rebate, um, place the order. So, you know, once I, once I'll send out a note, once I reach 10 orders, so nobody else is uh, in the system and waiting or whatever. Okay. Roger, thank you. That was great. It was excellent. Very Thanks, informative. Everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.